You may be seated. As some of you might remember, the late comedian Rodney Dangerfield used to be able to tell the story of his life with two words. If you remember these words, say them with me. No respect. No respect, I'm telling you. It's a story of my life, no respect. If you had to tell the story of your life with two words, what would it be? Let's increase the challenge. If you had to tell the story of your life with one word, what would it be? Can't think of a word? Don't worry about it. Jesus has a word for you. Bless it. On a hill far away, over 2,000 years ago, a rabbi from Nazareth opened his mouth and uttered that word, bless it. This rabbi had spent time in the synagogues of Galilee, teaching the people and healing various diseases. He had no form or beauty like the great King David to draw people to him. His followers weren't the brightest bulbs in the lamp, just a few fishermen and other uneducated riffraff. He was not the kind of learned rabbi people turned to for advice. Many of those who followed him may have simply done so out of curiosity. When we hear that word blessed, we think we know what it means. Good health, finances in reasonable order, loving relationships with family and friends. In other words, blessing means lots of stuff we like and not lots of stuff we don't like. But Christ has other ideas about what blessing means. As Rabbi Jesus declared, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Now, what our Lord is describing is not some kind of future life, but life lived here and now. This is us. We are poor in spirit. We mourn our sin and wretchedness. We are meek before the throne of God, because what else can we be? We hunger and thirst for righteousness, knowing that this is the place where we'll find it. We are beggars, it is true, so said Martin Luther. The only thing we can do is cry out, Lord have mercy just as we did. But still, I imagine a number of you are thinking, that doesn't sound like the story of my life, and I'm not so sure I want it to. 
Blessed are the poor in spirit. That means those who don't have a pot to you know what in. <laughs> Whatever happened to God helps those who help themselves. Blessed are those who mourn. I've never felt very blessed when I've been mourning. I'd much rather party. Blessed are the meek. The meek only ever seem to get bullied. That doesn't look very blessed to me. Besides, with all we've done to this planet, is it worth inheriting? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They never seem satisfied. No sooner is one injustice righted than they're out protesting another. Blessed are the pure in heart. The words we have for people like that are prudes and goody two-shoes. Blessed are the peacemakers. Well, that sounds great. Until you get on the wrong side of those who have invested themselves in keeping the war going, and you discover there's a lot of them. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. Blessed are, those, are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Um, no thank you. What about, blessed are those who pull themselves up by their own bootstraps. Blessed are the healthy. Blessed are those who keep themselves safe. Blessed are those with lots of Facebook friends. Blessed are those with a fat 401k. Blessed are those who go on nice vacations. Doesn't Christ have anything to say about that? And that's from 21st century Americans. Imagine uh, that you're one of his first hearers. How do you think they must have felt? If this was the kind of blessing Christ had in mind, it wasn't their idea of blessing, that's for sure. And what about Christ's own disciples? These words were directed mainly at them, after all. The crowd just happened to be listening along. They had to wonder if this was the life they really signed up for. In the world's way of thinking, none of the things Jesus said is blessed. In fact, the world tells us, if you want to be blessed, listen to the Beatitudes and do just the opposite. But Christ doesn't tell us these things just to drag us down. The Beatitudes describe who we are because they describe who he is. Blessed are the poor in spirit. So said the one who left his heavenly home and came down to earth, and as St. Paul tells us, humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant. Blessed are those who mourn. So said the one who wept at Lazarus' grave and then wept over Jerusalem on his own way to die. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. So said the one who asked, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Blessed are the merciful. So said the one who ate with sinners, healed lepers, and opened the eyes of the blind. Blessed are the pure in heart. So said the one with the purest heart of all. Blessed are the peacemakers. So said the one who made peace between a holy God and sinful humanity. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on account of me. So said the one who was reviled and persecuted and slandered all the way to the cross and beyond. So said the one who rose again on Easter Sunday. On this day, 
The church remembers all the faithful Christians, all the saints who had come before. They aren't saints because their lives were so wonderful and spiritual. They aren't saints because they worked a miracle or two. They're saints because Christ says they're saints. That goes for us too. We confess that we're sinners, and so we are. But we're also saints because Christ says we are. We are holy because Christ says we are. We aren't blessed because of how poor in spirit we are, or how mournful, or how hungry and thirsty for righteousness we've been, or how pure in heart, or how much peace we've made, or how much persecution we've endured. We're blessed because Christ says we're blessed. And it's not a cheap or easy thing for him to say either. It cost nothing less than his very life and every drop of his holy precious blood shed on Calvary's cross. And we're blessed because when God the Father looks at us, he sees the Blessed One. The story of Jesus' life is the story of our lives because he has attached himself to us. In holy baptism, you and I were clothed with Jesus Christ and we take him into our bodies every time we receive his body and blood in his holy supper. On this day, we celebrate all Christ's saints and you and I are part of that number. We come before our God poor in spirit, mourning our sin, and we confess that we are poor, miserable sinners. And the Holy One calls us holy. The Blessed One calls us blessed. All because we're so united with him in his death and resurrection that his story is ours. That's the story of your life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh. 